African Union meets on Niger crisis as coup leaders vow to persecute ousted President Bazoum for high treason. National Human Rights Commission laments extrajudicial killings and illegal arrest in Zamfara State. 19 states to witness heavy rainfall that may lead to flooding from August, to 14, August 14 to 18. On the foreign scene, Maui wildfire survivors decry lack of warnings as death toll rises. These are the headlines on Trust News Update this hour. I am Ayuba Ilya. Thanks for joining. And now the details. The African Union said it was holding a meeting on Monday on the crisis in Niger following the coup on July 26 that toppled President Mohamed Bazoum. The Pan-African body said in a post on X, formerly known as Twitter, that AU's Peace and Security Council are meeting to receive an update on the evolution of the situation in Niger and the efforts to address it. The meeting is taking place at AU headquarters in the Ethiopian capital, Addis Ababa. Those attending include AU Mission Commission Chief Mosa Faki Mohamed, as well as representatives from Niger and the West African bloc, ECOWAS. Last week, Faki expressed deep concern at the reported poor conditions of Bazoum's detention, calling his treatment at the hands of coup leaders unacceptable. On Sunday, Niger's military regime vowed to persecute the democratically elected Bazoum for high treason and slammed ECOWAS for imposing sanctions on the country. Bazoum, 63, and his family have been held at the president's official Niamey residence since the coup. And while the closure of the Nigerian border with Nigeria as a result of the coup in Niger Republic has led to a weekly financial loss of 13 billion naira, stakeholders under the aegis of the Arewa Economic Forum said in Abuja that northern Nigerian businessmen have over 2,000 containers of perishable goods that are stranded due to the closure. Chairman of the forum, Ibrahim Shehu, said according to 2022 statistics, formal trade between the two countries account for $234 million, equivalent to 171 billion naira, while informal trade is roughly estimated to be at $638 million, equivalent to 515 billion naira, mostly in perishable commodities. And Dakata also noted that the Nigerian population is about 25 million, about 70 percent of the people live in towns with proximity to Nigeria. Now he said that Nigerians, uh, Nigerians rather, depend on Nigeria for most of the essential commodities they consume. Nigerian businesses also rely on transit points for importation from Niger Republic. Now, one of the major issues bedeviling the people of Taraba State is the hike in prices of grains, which, according to them, is caused by the removal of fuel subsidy in the country. However, some have associated the problem with the recent cashless policy insecurity, among other reasons. Here's the details. The fall subsidy removal and other policies of the government have continued to have adverse effects on cost of living in the country. Prices of the farm produce are not left out. The cost of grains have gone up astronomically in Taraba State. Some, however, refuse to blame the rise in prices of commodities to subsidy removal. To them, the heavy trucks and the farm machineries used in producing and transporting those goods are diesel power engine that has nothing to do with fall. These trucks you see are, are diesel using trucks. So, but in one way or the other, the truth is the subsidy has actually affected even the movement of business these days. I can tell you the reason. Okay, in the sense that it has increased high rate of living. Okay, supposing you are leaving your house, 
where I stay, I used to pay 15 naira. Now you see, I, 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 I will no longer pay the 15 naira, I would rather pay 100 naira to be here. Now it, you can see that it has affected everyone in the sense that you are now looking forward to it. It wasn't like this before, but now the things are increasing. I think it's as a result of the subsidy. Some of the shop owners in Jalingo Main Market said the situation is the consequences of the series of problems facing the country. For one to be 60 years and above as a nation and still being dependent, we are so dependent. So what I'm talking about grain particularly is that uh, it's just that people are using what they have to get what they want. You see, uh, not necessarily because of uh, fuel subsidy, but at least, as I least said, I know it contributed. For the chairman, Amana Farms and Grain Supply Taraba State Chapter, hike in prices is caused by high cost of premium motor spirit, popularly known as petrol. The issue of this forest subsidy too also contributed because if you can discover that sometimes if you went to the village, a village when you will buy a goose there and then you convert it to the to the headquarter, the transportation as of then maybe. A bag is going to go on, let's say, 500 naira to take it to the where you will sell it. As at now, now the bag will not you will take almost 1,000 plus before you will now bring the bag to the where you are going to sell your grains. Both the residents and the marketers are appealing to the government to hasten the distribution of palliatives to cushion the effects of hardship on the people. Now, dozens of farmers in villages in Ushishi and Lavun local government areas have reportedly fled their homes since Friday night due to the movements of bandits across the two areas. Some farmers told Daily Trust correspondent that they fled their homes on Friday night to escape the onslaught of the bandits whom they noted moved in large numbers with cattle. Residents said that the bandits passed the night in Akari and Cheji in Ushishi on Friday after the villagers had fled. The resident of Ushishi, Aliu, a resident of Ushishi, Aliu Muhammad, said some of the fleeing farmers lived with their relatives while some stay at Kwata Primary School. The Niger State Police Command is yet to issue any statement on the incident. However, a source in the military told the Daily Trust correspondent that the military had been deployed to trace the bandits who the residents claim were still in their villages. When contacted, the Director General, Niger State Emergency Management Agency, Garba Salihu, said the situation is being monitored to enable the state government respond to the needs of the internally displaced persons in Ushishi and other parts of the local government. The, the National Human Rights Commission, NHRC, in Samfara State, uh, says that it frowns at extrajudicial killings and illegal arrest of persons accused of being armed bandits informants by volunteer groups popularly known as Ansake. The state's coordinator of the commission, Abdullahi Abubakar, disclosed this while speaking with journalists in Guso, the Zamfara State capital, over the renewed spate of attacks, abductions and killings. He said the commission is investigating five cases of ex extrajudicial killings and illegal arrest in the state. The report. According to Abdullahi, there are many of such cases in Zafra State which the commission is investigating in order to ensure justice for the victims and prevent future occurrences, even as he calls on Governor Delta Lowell to move fast to engage residents of the troubled communities to discuss ways they can collectively Joined to tackle the insecurity in the state. We need to sit down with major traditional leaders in the area. Does the areas, the district heads, they know they should identify the people that they know. Then from there, he should also sit down with all security personnel 
in that local government. Abubakar urges the military, which is launching the ongoing offensive against the armed bandits, to change the strategy because despite the efforts of the troops to rout them, they are, however, emboldened daily and the military has not been able to capture any of their leaders. Even though the security personnel are doing their best, especially the Nigerian Air Force and the Nigerian Army, even the Nigerian police too, they do have some arrests. The Nigerian Air Force are doing attacks. The Nigerian Army are doing their own. That's the ground truth, but it's not the way to go and it's not enough because there is no day that will pass without hearing an abduction in the state, without hearing from two, three local governments. There are killings, there are abductions, even through the pedal roads, they do block the roads and fight all the the commuters. Yes, the commuters. So there is a need for them to change this time. And what I feel is I should still go back to the engagement with the locals. The National Human Rights Commission NHRC coordinator called on federal and Zafara state governments to be proactive to stop the spate of attacks, abductions, and killing of innocent citizens by armed bandits to ensure peace return to troubled and rural communities to enable farmers to go about carrying out their lawful activities without fear of being attacked. Police in Oshun State have arrested suspected armed robbers who snatched a car from a woman. The police recovered the car from the suspects in Patakot River State. Hamid Oegbadi reports. According to the Oshun State Police Command, the suspect, John Mike, and his gang members robbed a woman in Elisha and snatched a car. The suspect took the car to Rivers State where he was using it as his private car. Police detectives traced the car to Rivers State, recovered it and arrested the suspect and his gang members. But Mike claimed that he bought the car without knowing that it was a stolen vehicle. I mean that there's some guy, guy that have uh, have Corolla, and me I need Corolla to drive as my own private. I want to buy a Corolla. When they now called me, I said what type of Corolla, and they said the details to me. Been uh, they said the details, oh, oh, four, and I came down to uh, and They said the picture through WhatsApp to me, and I check we negotiate on price. So when I came down to the Oshun State to, uh, to buy the vehicle from them, and I travel I, I, with the custom paper, with everything, is with the, with the car. When I sell the vehicle, I pay them their money, and I drive the vehicle away. Even the custom paper that I used to drive it to my destination, be it Port Harcourt. So it's later on, uh, oh, the same people now called me that uh, they, I should come to Oshun. I said, what happened? I said, they want to see me. When I my way get to Oshun, I said, I get arrested. And now let me know that the vehicle was stolen from uh, somebody, I don't know. So that's why I'm here since that time. The command advised youths in the state to shun criminal tendencies and strive to earn legitimate income. We have a lot of youths out there that are doing things that are normal, that are doing lawful jobs, that are, you know, creating things for themselves. And they are making it from there. They should shun everything that, uh, that is evil or that is uh, unlawful because we are determined as a command as a police command that we are going to leave this command of all these criminal elements the commissioner of police in the state Ken Delonge, said his men have resolved that there will be no hidden place for criminals in the state amid ojegbade trust tv news oshobo no fewer than 19 states are likely to witness heavy rainfall, which might likely lead to flooding in affected states between August 14 to 18, 2023. The National Emergency Management Agency Southwest Coordinator Ibrahim Farinloe in a message said that the prediction was made by the Flood Early Warning Systems Central Hub, Federal Ministry of Environment. Now, according to Farinloe, the flood will affect the following locations in Delta, Ekiti, Ondo, Ogun, Oshun, Lagos, 
Cross River, and that's at our state. Other states involved are Bochi, Jigawa, Adamawa, Kwara, Zamfara, Sokoto, Benue, Imo, and Abia State. The NEMA official warned those residing in such states to take precautionary measures ahead of the stated date. Kano State Government said it has placed 8,277 patients on tuberculosis treatment in the last one week, which represents the highest quarterly notification ever in Nigeria. The Commissioner of Health, Dr. Abubakar Labaran Yusuf, revealed this to journalists in Kano on Monday at the commemoration of the 2023 National TB Testing Week. He said Kano State was the most popular state in Nigeria and one of the five high TB burdened states, with infections standing at 34,547, which represents an expected notification of 8,637 TB patients per quarter. The commissioner explained that the state governor, Abba Kabir Yusuf, had placed priority on the health and well being of the people of the state and ensuring that Kano is TB free. He therefore called on citizens across Kano states to go to the nearest health facility for TB screening, early diagnosis and prompt treatment free of charge. You're watching the news update on Trust TV coming up shortly. We take a look at ways to tackling rampaging poverty in the country. Details and more after the break. Welcome back. You're watching the news update on Trust TV. Let's take a look at the top stories again. African Union meets on Niger crisis as coup leaders vow to persecute ousted President Bazoum for high treason. National Human Rights Commission laments extrajudicial killings and illegal arrest in Zamfara State. In other stories, empowering youths to acquire skills and stimulating small and medium-scale businesses is critical to tackling rampaging poverty in the country. A cross-section of respondents in Makuriri, the Benue state capital, made the observation while speaking with Trust TV's correspondent, Jimmy Azande. The, report. the respondents are of the opinion that addressing the current economic realities in the country required pragmatic approach to youth empowerment through skills acquisition to guarantee self-reliance. Because the government is not helping, helping matters. Like now, I want to say is that it doesn't matter your background, it doesn't matter your educational qualification. 
But if you find yourself by doing it one thing or the other, God will bless you of that what you are doing. Like I learn handwork and it is the handwork that is helping me. I'm taking care of my family. They are going to school. We're not lucky. So but if you depend that you do government work, government can feed you as what is happening this time around. Others said formal education alone is not a solution to rising youth unemployment. It must be supported with relevant skills for sustainable development. I am encouraging youth to go back to skill acquisition because it is self-employed. Because this can make you to raise money by yourself and then it will also give uh, finances to you yourself and the family and also the society. The youth nowadays, if they should go to school, they solely depend on the formal education that they acquire from school and go out looking for white collar jobs and all of this. But what, what is necessary in this uh, current situation of Nigeria economy? What we want is handiworks and everything and other, and other crafts that can like enable us to be self-employed. So my advice for the youth is that we should not solely depend on the formal education that we acquire from the university or other schools. That we should go, go forth and look for other vocational, vocational skills to, uh, to help our life and any living. Because as far as we have something doing every day, every day that you come to your shop, you discover that God will bless you with something that you take to your house. So, but if you depend on people, sometimes maybe you go to them, you will not find anything. So it will not even help you anything, you will be frustrated. So for you not to be frustrated, it is so you have something doing. Hand work is very, very important in this life. As the present administration fine-tunes its palliative measures to caution the impact of petrol subsidy removal, the respondents say encouraging self-sustainability amongst youth is necessary to build a strong and resilient economy. Jimmy Azandi, Trust TV News, Makodi. The Nigeria Civil Aviation Authority has urged airlines and other service providers in the subsector to comply with the Nigerian Civil Aviation Regulations 2022 on insurance cover. NCAA Director General Captain Musa Nuhu, in a statement he issued on Sunday in Abuja, said that the directive was contained in an all operators letter dated August 11. According to him, the need for compliance is sequel to the coming into force of Nigeria Cars 2022 on 10th July 2023, which makes it mandatory for all airlines to comply with the regulations. He said non-adherence to the regulation will attract immediate sanctions including the grounding of the specific aircraft and taking F enforcement action against any airline or service provider that defaulted. Now on the foreign scene, the death toll from the deadliest U.S. wildfire in more than a century ticks towards 100 in the Hawaiian island of Maui. Now, there is growing anger among residents who blame government's inaction for the heavy loss of life. Officials have confirmed 96 deaths and warned that the figure was likely to rise as recovery crews with cadaver dogs work their way through hundreds of homes and burnt out vehicles in Lahaina. Now, the historic coastal town was almost destroyed by fast-moving inferno early on Wednesday and survivors said that there had been no warnings. When asked on Sunday why none of the island's sirens had been activated, Hawaii Senator Mazi Hirono said that she would wait for the results of an investigation announced by the state's attorney general. And in sports news, the World Athletics Federation has dismissed reports that Nigeria's track queen Toby Amoso has been declared to participate at the forthcoming 2023 World Athletics Championships in Budapest, Hungary. Amoso, who is currently the world record holder in the women's 100 meters hurdles, was excluded from the country's contingent by the Athletics Federation of Nigeria as she is currently under, under doping investigation by the Athletics Integrity Unit. 
Reports surfaced last weekend that the 26-year-old had been cleared to take part at the World Athletics Championships, but the body has denied the reports. It will be recalled that the World Athletics included Amoson's name on the entry list for the competition published last week, but with a provision that her participation will depend on the outcome of the whereabouts failure charge preferred against her by the AIU. The AIU is expected to make their decision known before the start of the World Athletics Championships. And that's a wrap on Trust News Update. You can watch more via all our social media platforms and also on our YouTube live stream. I am Ayuba Ilya. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.